Hello, everybody. My name is Al. I'm with CADCAMWizard.com, and today we're going to take a look at some four axis programming with the VCAR Pro software. So let's go ahead and get into it. Uh, to begin with, I'm just going to uh, close this file down. That's the result we're after. So let's go ahead and start over. Okay. So we're going to create a new file. And the type of job this is going to be is a rotary job. Okay. So a couple of takeaways. Let's make sure that the job size is greater in length than our part size. Okay. Uh, for two reasons. One, we have to add a tab so we have something to hold on to so that it doesn't cut all the way free. Uh, and I guess that's the only reason. <laughs> okay. Now, the second thing is we're cutting from a, a square piece of stock. So the diameter would be the length of that stock. In this case, I'm saying it's three inches. So our part is actually going to be six inches. Uh, so we're making the stock a little bit greater. And then the diameter is going to be three inches because that's the size of stock that we're going to work with. Now, uh, we're going to zero on the top of the stock. Okay. And we're also going to zero on center. Uh, for this machine configuration, it's... Uh, orientation along y-axis for our rotation and then we're going to go ahead and choose OK. All right, so we got that part set up. Now, the first thing we want to do is knock down the corners off of our stock to get us ready for the additional roughing. OK, so there's a gadget up here where there's a wrapping uh, toolpath. So we're going to go to wrapping and create rounding toolpath. Okay, so for here, our blank size is going to be three. Um, I'm fine. I don't know whether it matters or not, but I'm just matching the square and the round to the same number. Uh, we're going to do optimize raster along cylinder. Uh, as far as our tool that we're going to use, we want to try to use the same tool for the whole job. Uh, this way, we don't have to do a tool changer. So we're going to use a quarter inch ball mill. Uh, this is our depth of cut. Uh, this is our step over, so we'll make this a little more aggressive, okay? Um, RPM, this is our cutting feed rate. We're going to do 50 and 25, and then we're going to say apply and select. So now we have our tool set up, okay? It does verify our length here and does verify our diameter. It also gives us that information over here. Uh, the Z depth is half the diameter. The height in Y is 6.5, and this X value is uh, the circumference of the stock laid out flat, okay? All right, we're going to go ahead and choose OK on that, and that has gone ahead and created our wrapping toolpath uh, for knocking down the corners. If we jump over to the cam, we'll see it over here. Uh, if we preview the toolpath, it's going to show it laid out for us. Uh, going to that cylinder. Now, something to note is the center of the tool does go to the edge of the stock. So you will be uh, 125 over with the uh, half of your tool, essentially. Okay. Uh, a couple other things is you can go to view and turn off the color shaded view. Uh, this might be a little bit easier for you to see what's going on. Uh, if we go into this orientation, uh, we can see how it's knocking down the corners. Now, as far as the setup on the job, you know, initially I had a question on whether it should be on the flat or on one of the corners as far as how to clock the stock. Uh, we do want the flat of the stock to be uh, parallel with the table. OK, so we're going to go ahead and turn uh, color shading mode back on. We'll go ahead and turn that one off. We're going to reset our preview, close this and then move back over to here. All right, let's just look at our 2D view at this point. Now, the next step that we want to do is to import the model that we want to machine. So we're going to go to modeling here. And from there, we're going to use this folder option to import our model. And we're bringing in an STL file. OK, so when we bring in the STL file, this one is not an irregular shape. So uh, it's going to line up right on center. Uh, but if you had an irregular shape, you would have the ability to uh, move the model around in X, Y, or Z in order to align it with the part. Now, one of the things you'll notice is as I rotate it, you'll see this uh, 
this cylinder in the center. So that is your axis of rotation. And we want to try to position the model in such a way so that there's limited undercuts. Anything, anytime you see that red model uh, or this red cylinder below your model, it's going to indicate an undercut and probably going to run into problems there. So we want to do the best that we can to align it. Um, in this example, because it's uh, cylindrical or concentric circles, uh, it lines up right on center. The other thing we can do is verify the diameter, uh, verify the length that's here. Uh, and in this case, this is going to import the way that I want and we'll choose OK. Now, the next thing that I want to do here is I want to add some tabs on the end. I'm curious of how to get rid of this uh, preview mode here. I don't really want to see this cylinder. What I want to see is my two, my two, uh, my model here. So let's um, let's go to here, reset, preview. Let's see, close. Okay, there it goes. Now we have the the model here. So our next step is to add some tabs on the end of the part. Now, I believe you can model those in and bring the tabs already into the part, but uh, there's also a feature in the modeling tab that we can use to add those tabs into the part. So what we need to do is select these two items. So we're going to select one and then hit control and then select the other one. We're going to right click, combine and merge. And then that will merge those together. Then what we're going to do is just select the zero plane. And then we're going to right click and go to properties. And then you'll notice this base height section here. So we can come in here and we can add a diameter. Now, what this is going to do is stop the tool from going down uh, closer to center line. So it's going to keep the tool connected, or I'm sorry, keep the part connected to the stock. Uh, and also in our case, we may want to make this large enough uh, as to not hit the fixture, right? Because our stock uh, length is, you know, the fixture goes right up next to it. So uh, because of the way the machine set up, it doesn't leave us much room. So really, we want to make sure that this diameter uh, not only will keep the part connected, but also kind of using it to block the tool path from running into our fixture. All right. Once we're happy with that position, we'll go ahead or that position or I'm sorry, that size. We'll go ahead and close this. So now we can see we have our two tabs on either end. Now, from here, we can jump back over to the cam side and we can start generating our tool path. So we're going to go to the roughing tool path here. We're going to use the same tool. We're going to use the model boundary. Uh, this is going to be a raster. Uh, because of the orientation, uh, I want to rough it down the length of the part. So we're going to make this 90 and then we'll choose calculate. And you'll see we get that tool path. Now, if we unwrap the, the model, you can see what it looks like. And then if we play through our simulation here, you know, we'll be able to see how the tool is going to work back and forth in order to, to rough the part out, right? If I pause that, let me see if it, uh, it doesn't like it when I pause it, it tends to crash. Let me see. Let me just let it finish what it's doing here. It gets all the way through and it's just roughing down these different tapers that are on the part. Now it's showing it in 3D. Uh, but really, because we're in a, a rotary setup, uh, this is going to be all rotation moves. But you can see how uh, it leaves our tabs, so we're not cutting all the way through. Uh, let's go ahead and close that. Let's show it in the, the wrap mode. And uh, that was our, our roughing routine. Now, the next thing we would do is do the finishing. Same thing, same tool model boundary. This has a, a little uh, offset to make sure that it cuts past center line, 90 degrees and calculate. And that gives us our tool path. And again, you can see how it's avoiding cutting through with the tabs that we generated. We can run this through a simulation now. And we'll see that we're at our finished size part. So the takeaways are uh, you can use this view function to turn off 
the display of the model. So you can just look at the tool paths. I'm a very visual person. I like to see the pictures. So this way I can see what I'm looking at. That's the corner round. That's the roughing. That's the finishing. All right. So that's one thing. And we can turn that on or off using this option here. Uh, the other thing we can do is swap between uh, rotated or wrapped mode or unwrapped mode. Okay, so those are some of those options there. Let's go ahead and reset the preview uh, and turn off our tool pass. Now, the other thing that is a takeaway here is under this modeling tab. Okay, uh, actually, I didn't go over the machine setup here, but that's our diameter that's on center. These are your clearance values. Okay. Uh, we're going to say no to that. <clears throat> the other takeaway is on the modeling tab. Uh, after we've imported the model, we select these two, right click, combine, and merge. So we do that. After we merge, we click on the zero plane, right click, properties, and then we can use this value here in order to increase or decrease our tab height. And you know, we want to make sure that the stock is bigger than the part, and then we can use our base height in order to add the tab. So I hope you find this video useful uh, in uh, your four axis workflow. Uh, if you have any questions, comments, or feedback, uh, just reply back to the, uh, the blog or uh, social post or YouTube video uh, where you find this. Other than that, I look forward to seeing you in the next one. Thank you so much.